In today's video, things you missed in Yu-Gi-Oh! The Virtual World Arc. Yes, and that is coming up. What is up there and welcome to a brand new video on 414 YGO. In today's video I'm bringing you things you may have missed in Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is the Virtual World Arc. And hey, if you're new here, why not join the 414 community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out. So, I'm going in with episodes 98 all the way through to episode 109. This is going to cover the first part of the Virtual World Arc. Next week I will cover the second part. Super pumped about this. Super excited. Let's get straight in to the things you missed. Episode 98. So this is basically an introduction to the Virtual World Arc. All this energy, massive anticlimax. Nothing really happens in this episode other than some sub and dub changes. However, this episode technically has the first ZTK. For those of you who don't know what that stands for, zero turn kill. This was basically when the simulation Kyber took on the deck master, which was total defense Shogun, and it just completely wiped out the simulation Kyber's blue eyes ultimate dragon. Thus, with the deck master being destroyed, the duelist automatically loses the duel. Awesome sauce. Episode 99, this is the first proper kind of deck master's duel. This is between Yugi and Gansley. Once again, massive anti-climax. Nothing really happens other than a lot of sub to dub changes. Uh, and you'll see this theme reoccurring throughout this video. Because these duels aren't technically like real proper duels, there's not an awful lot of mistakes in there. Because with this arc, I guess they kind of thought, you know what, let's go Kaiba. Let's screw the rules and just make up our own game. So if it's a mistake, hey, no one will know. We've got money. <laughs> But of course this episode features the awesome abridged moment where uh, obviously Karibo selects itself as Yugi's deck master. Do la la la. Moving on to episode 100, so boom, explosion. I have officially covered 100 episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh in the series now. Awesome source, awesome source, pat on the back me. Anti-climax again, nothing really happens. Going on to episode 101 now, same again as with episode 100, nothing happens, so we'll move swiftly into episode 102. This is where Taya takes on Crump. In the dub, when Taya's mirror force is destroyed by driving snow, we see enough of the face down monster that she has, which was the unhappy maiden. However, when she summons this, it is the fire sorcerer. On to episode 103. When discussing what to do with what was left of their deck to get through the four star door, Yami Yugi refers to the door as having four face down cards. However, moments previous to this, he had just mentioned that it had five. Episode 104 now. This is where Joey takes on Johnson. In the dub, Joey calls Sinister Justice a trap card, though it is not. Bit of trivia on this one as well. Johnson is the first member of the Big Five to actually take the form uh, in, in terms of its deck master as a monster used by a main character. In this one's case, it was Judge Man, of course used by Seto Kaiba. In the very first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh, he may have used it a bit later on in Duelist Kingdom. Out of the five, there's only one other that will take the form of a monster used by our main, main protagonists, which will be Lecter, who duels Kaiba as Joey's monster, Jinzo. Episode 105, a continuation of the duel between Joey and Johnson. Once again, nothing out of the ordinary in this episode. Episode 106 now, so we've got a three in one duel here. Well, three versus one, I should say. We've got Tristan, we've got Duke, we've got Serenity. Worst combo ever, maybe? <laughs> Probably as anticlimactic as the majority of episodes in this video not having anything going on. However, they take on Nesbitt. So, of course, they're all choosing their deck masters. When Duke chooses Strike Ninja for his deck master, it is shown to be a level 5 monster with 2,350 attack and 2,200 defense. However, in the actual game, it's a level 4 monster with 1,700 attack and 1,200 defense. Screw the rules, they got monies. Also, Duke could have easily avoided the Machine King being summoned because Yoranzo, a monster controlled by Duke, has 100 more attack than Gigatech Wolf, a monster that Nesbitt obviously tributed for Machine King. There was a turn just before he'd sacrificed it where Duke obviously had the chance to have attacked this monster. He decided not to. Maybe he should just stick with the dice. 
107, episode 107. When Nesbitt becomes Perfect Machine King, there is a number four on his left shoulder. This is probably because he is the fourth member of the Big Five to appear individually, and it gives a further insight that maybe they are all ranked. In this duel as well, both Perfect Machine King and Saint Joan are of course fusion monsters, yet both of them attacked on the same turn of which they were summoned. As we know, this was probably a battle city rule here, uh, that the fusion monsters can't attack on the turn they were summoned, so that's one possibility uh, that in the virtual world here, they're not playing by the battle city rules as such. However, there's another possible explanation for this, in the fact that the deckmaster ability of Goddess with the Third Eye would actually allow fusion monsters summoned by its effect to attack the same turn in which they are summoned. On to episode 108, this is Kyber versus Lecter. So, the battle damage which Kyber's Spear Dragon inflicts to Lecter's Cyberjar is 1400, which actually is 400 more than it should be, making the Yu-Gi-Oh math incorrect, as their point difference was 1000. Like mentioned earlier with Johnson taking the form of Judge Man used by Kaiba, of course, swinging back to this one, Lecter is the second and only of the Big Five members to take the form of a monster used by uh, a main character. In this case, like I mentioned, it's Joey Wheeler's Jinzo. Finally, on to episode 109, this is where I'm going to end the video. Keeping up with the theme, nothing happens in this one. <laughs> hashtag anticlimactic, hashtag my love life. Boom! But thanks for watching, this was my video, Things You Missed in Yu-Gi-Oh! The Virtual World Arc. This of course is part one, and part two will be coming next week. Let's hope that there's more things we missed in those episodes. But if you want to see more videos like this, Yu-Gi-Oh! Fact videos, character deck duels, profiles, and more, then hit the subscribe button right now. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button, share this video with a friend, or just leave me a comment in the section below. Let me know which dual monster you would use as your deck master if you were in the virtual world arc yourself. But that is it from me. I will see you in the next video. Take care.